You hear a lot about the different container services that Azure has to offer, but I'm here to talk about one and one only. It's one that I think is very important, Azure Container Apps. Here you're gonna learn more about it, why it's important, and potentially some different use cases as to why it should be applicable to you. What's going on? My name is Omar and welcome back to Microsoft Dev Radio. One of the best channels on YouTube to learn more information about Azure, Microsoft, and the plethora of products that Microsoft has to offer. Make sure you click that subscribe button and make sure you hit that like button to let us know what we're doing here is a good job. So first I wanna get into what Azure Container Apps are. Azure Container Apps is a serverless platform that lets you maintain less infrastructure. And while you do that, it lets you save costs while running containerized applications. Instead of worrying about things like server configuration, container orchestration, or developmental details, or deployment details, container applications provide all the up-to-date server resources that'll keep you to the latest and greatest, keep you secure, and keep you stable. Now let's get into some backstory. Azure Container Apps was introduced at Microsoft Ignite in 2021. It's a serverless container platform, meaning you don't need to manage the underlying infrastructure. It stands as the fifth container service in Azure following app services, container service, container instances, and functions when they're containerized. Significant developments in cloud native ecosystem, particularly in storage, networking, service mesh, observability, and security have made Kubernetes and the cloud native stack enterprise ready. However, these advancements have added a level of complexity. While Kubernetes architecture and APIs are standardized and mature, the developer experience is often seen as lacking. To address this, Microsoft positions Azure Container Apps as a platform that lies somewhere in between platforms as a service and infrastructure as a service. Essentially, it offers Kubernetes without the hassle of managing it, making it more of a container infrastructure platform as a service. Two key functions I wanna talk about here. First and foremost, and I can't stress this enough, there is no infrastructure management. Azure Container Apps handles the infrastructure management, including scaling, load balancing, and security, allowing developers to focus on writing code. And then two, a very important feature, auto scaling. Applicants automatically scale based on demand from zero to any number of instances, ensuring optimal resource usage and cost efficiency. Now there's two things we talk about Azure Container Apps that I would be remiss if I missed out on the opportunity to highlight. That's Depar and that's Kita. Depar integration in Azure Container Apps provides an optional set of APIs to simplify apps and microservice development. It offers a pluggable model for easily swapping in and out services like storage, caching, messaging, and databases without altering your code. Depar enabled apps communicate securely using mutual TLS and other distributed tracing integrated with application insight, making it easier to track requests and transactions. Now Kita. Kita stands for Kubernetes-based event-driven autoscaler. This scales apps based on external factors, you know, like message queue length or any number of custom metrics from Prometheus. Azure Container Apps can handle different events from various sources. In essence, Dapper encapsulates the best practices for microservices, while Kita enables event-driven microscaling. In essence, Dapper encapsulates the best practices for microservices, while Kita handles the auto-scaling. And all of this is without the need of any additional Kubernetes management. Azure Container Apps also supports long-running, always-on background services that process events continuously. Although these services typically don't have public endpoints, you can enable ingress for those that do, securing them within a VNet or using managed identities to access other protected Azure resources. First, we gotta talk about the microservices. Now, these are ideal for building and deploying applications composed of microservices. This enables independent development, deployment, and scaling. Next, the event-driven applications. This is suitable for applications that need to respond to events for Azure Event Hubs, Azure Service Bus, and other event sources. APIs and web applications. Azure Container Apps are great for hosting APIs and web applications that are requiring auto-scaling and high availability. Azure Container Apps are also great for background processing. You know, things that need long-running, always-on background services for tasks like processing, queuing, and batch jobs. Now, how to get started. First, you wanna create an Azure Container Environment. Set up an environment that acts as a boundary for your containerized application. Then you're gonna to wanna to deploy your container. Use Azure CLI, ARM templates, or the Azure portal to deploy your container images from Azure Container Registry or Docker Hub. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna configure ingress. Set up ingress rules to expose your applications to the internet or keep them private within a VNet. And then next, you gotta monitor and manage. 
Use Azure Monitor application insights and log analytics for monitoring, logging, and diagnostics. Azure Container App is a powerful solution for developers looking to deploy and manage microservices and containerize applications with minimal overhead. By leveraging serverless principles, Kubernetes, and open source technologies like Dapper and Kita, it provides a robust, scalable, and secure platform for modern application development. Whether you're building a new application from scratch or migrating over to a new cloud environment, Azure Container Apps offer the tools to simplify your life and your journey forward.